Hi, this is Lewis from SoFly, and in this video I'm going to show you how to import variable products into WooCommerce using WPL import. So first thing I'm going to do is show you just a basic variable product import so you get an idea of what we're doing. And then I'll show you how to do it no matter what kind of file you have, I'll show you all the options. So I've uploaded this file, it has snowboard sacks, snowboard carrying cases, and they come in different colors and different sizes. So I'm going to import it to WooCommerce products. Continue to step two. There are 153 rows in the file. So there are a few main products and then many variations, different size, different color. Continue to step three. And now what we'll do is just drag and drop to get all of our data into the right places. So we'll put the product name as the title. We'll put the product description as the content. We can preview that and see how it looks. And then we'll go to the WooCommerce add-on inside of WPL import. And this looks exactly like WooCommerce. And we're basically just going to set the options in a similar way that we would if we were doing it manually in WooCommerce. So I want to do variable products. I want to set the price. So I just drag and drop the price over. Then I want to set the attributes. Those are the things that can change, that the user can choose from. So the user can choose different colors and different sizes. And now we go to the variations tab. And this is how we tell WPL import how to link all the variations together into a single product. So what is it in this file that makes the variations together? In this case, the title is the same. So for one product that has many variations, the title is always the same. Board sack, different size, different color. Board sack, same title, different color, different size. Another board sack with a different color, different size, and so on and so on and so on. And I'm just going to keep going through this file so you can see once we get to a different product. So 20, 21, there are many variations for board sack. Now we have a gig bag. And this also has different color, different size. Another gig bag, different color, different size. So what's the same is that the product name is the same. So what we'll do is choose all variations for a particular product, have the same title. And then we'll drag the title over here. And this will allow WPL import to link all the variations together. And then we have some other options. Um, do we want to set the default variation? Um, are we also importing simple products? In this case, I'm just going to say set the first variation as the default selection in the drop downs. That way, when the user first goes to the page, they won't necessarily have to make a choice if they want to just buy the first variation. Next up, I'm going to import the images. You can have a different image for each variation. And we do in this file, it's optional. And one thing to note is that the main product here, the first, the first mention of the variation, has many images. You can't quite see it here, but if I paste these URLs here, you'll see they're all separated by a pipe character right here. We have an image here, and then another one here, all separated by pipe characters. So we're going to enter in a pipe as the separator. That will allow WPL import to divide up all of the different images. And here they are right here. So we've set up our product title, our description, our price, our attributes, um, how WPL import will link the variations together, our images. And that's all we need to do to import variable products. So I'm going to continue to step four. We also need to set a unique identifier. Just click auto detect and WPL import does it for us. Continue, confirm. And now WPL import is going to process 153 records in our file and create variable products. So I'm going to pause the video here and just fast forward it because this is going to take maybe three, five minutes to download all those different images. Okay, our import is now complete. Let's take a look at the imported variable products. So here we go. They're all showing as out of stock. That's because I forgot to set a stock level. So with WPL import, it's very easy to correct any mistakes you made. You can just edit your import. And let's go to WooCommerce add-on inventory. Set stock status to in stock. Now we'll update our import template and we'll rerun the import. And I don't want to wait to download all the images again. So I'll go to import settings, choose which data to update, uncheck images. And now we'll just run the import again, and that will correct the error I made the first time. It'll just overwrite all the old posts, 
and uh, and fix that. Okay, that's done. Let's go back to products. And then we fixed our stock statuses. And let's take a look at an example variable product. So here's one. It's imported the title, the description, and then all of the um, all of the variations right here. And let's take a look on the front end to see exactly what that looks like. And then I'll show you how to import these. So we have two colors for this wheelie locker and four different sizes. So that's a variable product. That's how simple it is to import a variable product with WPL import. And now I'll show you how to do it. So first, let's look at a very simple variable product. It's one I created manually. It's a t-shirt. And the anatomy of a variable product, it must have a name, a price, and then variation attributes. It could have one, it could have 10. And these are what the users select. And the way variations are stored in your file is going to affect the way you do the import with WPL import. So let's go do a new import. And let's use one of these example files I have right here. Let's use data example one. And first, let's look at this file to get an understanding of what's in it. So we have two products, a t-shirt and a mug. The t-shirt has uh, two variations, a blue variation and a red variation. So this first line is the parent product. And then these next two lines are the two variations. And we need a way to link the variations together or link them to the parent product. So we need something in the file that's the same for the variations as it is for the parent product. Can you see what it is in this example? In this example, it's the parent SKU and the SKU column. So this parent SKU column will tell WPL import to link 99X, 999X, and 999X together and assign them to the, this product, 999X. And it doesn't matter what we call our columns, it just matters that there's something that's the same for all the variations. So let's go and import this file. So we've uploaded it here. We choose WooCommerce products, continue to step two. We'll set the title. There's no description, so we'll just set it to the title. We'll set the SKU, the price. There's no price for the parent product, but that's fine. There is a price for the variations. We'll go to attributes and set up one attribute. Anytime you're importing variation products, you have to set up some attributes. Change this to variable, and this will show us the variations tab right here, which allows us to explain how the products are linked together. So the SKU element for the parent product is right here. We give you a little screenshot, so if your file is similar to this one, you'll know exactly what to do. And then we'll put the parent SKU right here. And this tells WPL import how to link our variations together. And then I'll go back to inventory. I forgot to do that last time. Set these two in stock. And now I'll run the import. We'll auto detect the unique key, continue, and confirm and run import. So this import now has created two variation products, the t-shirt and the mug. Let's take a look at the t-shirt. We can choose from one of two colors. Now let's go back and edit this product. Um, one thing we'll notice is that it did not import the price correctly. Now this is pretty common when you have the prices in a format in your file different than they are in the WooCommerce add-on. So let's see why that was. Remember we can just edit the import settings or go to edit import and fix whatever's wrong very quickly. So right here, we could check the box auto fix improperly formatted prices. The problem is, in our file, the price is presented with the currency symbol. However, WooCommerce doesn't like this. So we'll just check the auto fix box, hit preview, and now you can see the prices are correct. Update template, run import, And now our prices are fixed and showing up correctly. So let's go into a little more detail on what a variable product is. Every variable product in WooCommerce is stored, at, stored as a parent product with its variations as children of that parent product. So in your data file, you need to either have only children elements or a parent element with children elements. And if you have only children elements, 
there needs to be something that's the same for all the children elements. And if you have parent and children elements, there needs to be something that's the same for both the parent and the child elements. So often you'll get files that have no parent elements at all, just child elements. Let's take a look at one of those. Data example three. You'll see in this example, actually this one does have parent products. Let's take a look at four. In this example, you'll see that there are only variations. There's an apple tree and an orange tree. They have different root stalks and different heights, but there are only variations. There's no parent products. So what do we do in this case? Well, let's upload it and go to the WooCommerce add-on and find out. Continue to step two, step three. Again, just dragging and dropping to set the title. Variable product. There's no SKU here. That's okay. We don't need it. Price. Inventory. We'll set these two in stock. Attributes. The two attributes are root stock and height. And out of the variation step, how do we link these together? Well, we have four options. The options we want to use in this case is all variations for a particular product have the same title as the parent product, or all variations for a particular product have the same title. There are no parent products. Well, in this case, there are no parent products. We only have variations. So we'll use the fourth option and set our product title. Now, another way to do this, if you don't have product titles in your feed, you use all product variations or group with a unique identifier that is the same for each variation and unique for each product. So in this case, we could also say the unique identifier is the title. It doesn't matter, it's the same. See, the title is unique for each product, but the same for all the variations, and that's what we use to link them together. So let's run this import. And let's see what happens. Import complete, let's go to products. Here is our imported apple tree and orange tree. And here we go. Oops, it looks like I forgot to check fix prices again. Let's fix that quickly. Edit import, WooCommerce add-on. We preview the price now. It doesn't work because the currency symbol's there. Auto fix, now it's correct. Update, run import, confirm, and now the prices will all be immediately fixed. So let's take a look, and you can see this one has different prices depending on the selections you make. So let's do another import with another example file. New import, let's use example 2. Again, WooCommerce products, continue to step three, set the title, variable product, set the price, auto fix this time, inventory in stock, attributes. The attributes here are size, And now let's link the variations together. So what option do we use here? All products with variations are grouped together with a unique identifier that's the same for each variation and unique for each product. So there are two products in this feed, Coke, Coca-Cola, and Sprite. And we have a group ID that is the same for Sprite for all different variants of Sprite, and a group ID that's different than Sprite but the same for all different variations of Coke. So we'll just use that group ID. We've got to select this one first. We'll use that group ID, and that will tell WPL import to link the variations together. So at this point, I think you're probably getting the hang of how to import variations. You just need something that links them all together, and then WPL import can import them. So I'm going to end this video now, and then I'm going to do a couple more tutorials, which you can watch uh, lower on the page, on how to do more complex variable product imports, like importing them from an XML file where they're child elements, because you can do that too. There's a lot of things you can do with the WooCommerce add-on. You can
for example, import a stock level feed. So you could always keep your stock levels up to date without having to re-import the original variations and uh, run cron jobs to schedule the import on a schedule and much more. So check out the other videos in this WooCommerce add-on documentation section to learn how to do that. All right, thank you for watching.